So since I'm currently on vacation and at the beach, I thought today would be perfect for an ocean sunset tray. So the acrylic colors that I'm going to be using today are uh, by Essentials, it's Primary Yellow and Naphthalene Carmine, and then Master's Touch in Titanium White. So my vision is to kind of have a reddy, orangey, yellow sunset um, that is like reflecting on the water, red on the outside, like a, a deep darker red, and then pulling into the orangish color and then the yellow in the middle where the sun would be. Um, I googled some reference pictures and kind of got found one that I liked off of um, Google Images, so I'm kind of doing a play on that. So right now all I'm doing is I am painting the wood in the colors that I want. Um, the purpose of it is to A, get it on the outside of the frame so that once I pour the resin it it's all cohesive and I don't mess up the resin later on. And B, you need to seal that wood. If you don't seal the wood, because it's a porous thing, you're going to get, it's going to release all kinds of air bubbles. Um, and it's just going to look like crap. I made the mistake the first time I ever worked with wood and, you know, nobody shows you doing that part. And I thought, okay, I'm going to make a piece of jewelry. I stick a piece of wood in there. I pour resin and it was probably the worst thing I've ever made. It was terrible. And I felt so defeated after that for a while um, because the people that I was watching doing it never explained that part. Um, but yeah, you do need to make sure you have a really, really good coating on your wood so that it's sealed off and you're not going to have that issue with the extra air bubbles. Um, the bottom part of the tray, like the actual inside, you're not going to see the paint that's on there. So it kind of doesn't really matter what it looks like necessarily as long as you're using some type of pigment in your resin to coat it, um, which I will be using later. The only thing that is going to matter is around those edges where I'm not pouring the resin. Now, I do have to admit that this is my first actual real ocean type pour. Um, I've kind of sort of experimented-ish a while back with a wave and I had no idea what I was doing and it was a hot mess. It was so ugly and it was just all wrong. So while I finish the painting portion of this, I'm just going to let you guys listen to some music um, and then I will be back. I'm back. It's now 24 hours later. I wanted to give the paint a nice long time to dry to make sure there's no moisture left in there. The colors that I'm going to be using for the bottom portion of the water or are uh, Rolio colors in Scarlet, Tiger Orange, and Aurelian Yellow. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the colors straight individually. Um, I'm going to pour the colors where I want just 
those colors to go before I start into my blended colors. And then I'm just going to kind of slowly mix and blend the variations of the orange and the yellow into the red and whatnot to get the darker transitioning colors into that bright yellow that we have. So when I pour it, it it's going to look like it. I'm just haphazardly pouring it, but I really do have a plan in mind in how I want this to kind of look. So that's all you're going to see me. Added my yellow and I added my orange, just straight colors. Added a little orange into the red to darken it up or to lighten it up a little bit. And then I did got a separate cup and I mixed the orange and the yellow together to kind of get a little bit of a darker yellow. Um, now I'm just going to go through and continue the mixing and blending part so that it looks like it blends out more and I don't have such harsh lines of one color into another once it's done and because i i want the colors to pretty much stay where they're at i don't want to mix them up and blend them so much that you can't tell the difference of what's going on and it doesn't give the illusion that i'm hoping to get out of this um also in in saying all of this the paint that you're not going to see on the bottom those of you that are like well why would i want to waste my time going through and painting in the colors if you're not even going to see them it kind of gave me a guideline for how I wanted those colors to transition as well. Um, so yeah, you may not see the paint underneath, but it does give you that guideline for when you're pouring your resin. Okay, I want this much of just my straight darker red. I want this much of just my yellow. And yeah, you can make that up as you go along without having to do that part. Um, for me, it was just easier having that guideline so I kind of knew space-wise how I wanted it to go. Obviously, resin does as resin wants to do, and it's going to move and shift however it wants anyway, but I wanted to kind of help it along, because you can see here, my yellow's kind of going off to the side for God knows why. My table's level, so I don't know what its issue was, but it does what it wants to do. Um, right now I'm just taking a heat gun to it to get out any bubbles, blend it a little bit more. Now this is 24 hours later and my bottom layer is dry. Um, so now what I did was I just mixed up a little bit of resin. Uh, yeah, there's a crap ton of bubbles in there, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be using a lot of heat on here. So this is the part that I'm not 100% what to do. In all the videos that I've seen, they add a little bit of white pigment paste just a little bit, which is what I'm doing, just a drop, and they add a couple of drops of white alcohol ink. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to be just white alcohol ink or if it's supposed to be a sink or alcohol. Um, this one that I'm using is by the Cheap Art brand. It just says Advanced White on it. I don't know if it's a sinker or if it's just white. Um, and the reason... From what I've researched and learned is that you want to use the alcohol ink because it's supposed to help with the lacing effect of it. This is the part that I have not mastered. My waves turned out good. I just can't seem to get that lacing effect. So it could very well be the type of alcohol ink I'm using. And if you guys know, I would love for you to leave me a comment and let me know because I really want to master this. Like it's, it's something I really, really want to do. So what I'm doing now is right on the edge of where my clear resin is. I'm just going with a kind of a thin line of the white mixture. I'm hitting it with my torch, 
letting it wait a few seconds, praying that I get that lacing effect, which I don't. Um, and then I'm going to go in here with my heat gun to kind of just blow it out a little bit to fill the resin, that clear resin up along the edges. Um, hitting it again with a torch, waiting, hoping that it will happen. And it just doesn't seem to want to happen for me. And now here's the heat gun to kind of push that white out, push the clear to the edges, um, and try and get me the waves. Now you can see towards the left hand side of the screen where it looks like I may be getting a little bit of lacing effect, maybe, but then I decide that I'm going to keep fooling around with it and lose it completely because I want this wave to kind of, I want it to go along the side of it. I don't like the way that it's looking right now. It just looks too cut off. So, you know, you mess around with it too much sometimes and you lose what you're going for. I was doing that, hoping that, you know, I could fix it, get more. I wanted that white a little bit kind of foamier looking. And then watch this. I don't know what I did, but I caught it on fire. So I don't know if it, it shouldn't have been because of the alcohol ink in there, because at this point it's already done and it didn't do it to the rest. I have no idea what I did, but just be careful if you're going to use a torch, especially near wood, even though the wood wasn't the part that caught on fire, the resin did just be careful. Make sure you always have like a fire extinguisher and all that good stuff <laughs> handy just in case. Um, so yeah, this is how my wave is looking right now. And then we'll be back to see what it looks like after this one is dried. And here we are 24 hours later. Now it's time for my second wave. So now I just need to figure out where I want it. Again, the bubbles don't matter. I'm going to use a little bit less alcohol ink or excuse me, pigment paste than I did last time, because I'm hoping that maybe it'll make a difference in the lacing. I'm still using the same alcohol ink that I used last time, the cheap art. Um, and now we're getting ready to pour. So there was a little indentation for whatever reason when it dried. It kind of dipped down a little bit in the middle of it. So I want to make sure I cover that so you can't see it. And then I'm just going through, pushing it along to where I want that second wave to start. And I'm doing the same thing that I did before, just adding a little bit of that white, hitting it with my torch, waiting, hitting it again. And then I'm going to come through with my heat gun here in a minute and blow it out. All in all, they turned out way, way better than my very first attempt when I was fooling around with it just to see if I could do it. I'm kind of bummed out I didn't get the lacing effect, but I did get some pretty nice waves and I think it turned out really pretty. So that's about it for this one, guys. I appreciate you guys like subscribe and all that good stuff and I will catch y'all in the next one. Stay tuned for the